Woohoo, another Albania video. This is what everybody wants. Recently did a poll on my channel asking for the next Victoria 3 video. If you guys want to see me doing a whole bunch of shenanigans as Norway, basically conquering everything they had as Vikings, which is... I'm really glad you picked the other option, which we are doing now, which is playing as Albania, and we're going to try to make a utopia. And by utopia, what I'm saying is I want to have the highest standard of living humanly possible. And ideally, we do things like get up literacy, have a lot of loyalists, not too many radicals. We get, we do things like, you know, getting rid of slavery, you know, the, that sort of thing. And as we can see from all the laws here, there is a, uh, there's a lot to work toward. So as you can imagine, this is still a bit of a challenge trying to raise the standard of living to a reasonable amount as Albania. Because as you can see, we have two different kinds of slavery no rights for women, censorship, child labor, no schools, one textile mill and no other industry, no army, and we're behind on research for basically everything. Yeah. But through the indomitable Albanian national spirit, I am sure we will fix all these issues. But especially through the king of our country who has an enormous beard, which is very important in statecraft. Let's get started, why don't we? It's Albania, as you saw, we have no military, so we are kind of tiny and completely helpless. So we're going to have to make sure that everyone around us likes us so much that they won't even think about invading us. And by everyone around us, I mean Britain and Austria, apparently. Ah, we already have amicable relations with the Ottomans, as you can imagine. Next decrees. We've got a thousand authority, almost a, almost a thousand and a hundred. So we can pretty much do all of the... everything. Yeah, all the things. We can only pick one of these three. I'm going to go for manufacturing industry because it's overall just, just better to have more factories because they pay more wages and will therefore raise the standard of living. Plus, they generally use less people, which means we can build more of them without running out of population. Now, we have one port in our country and we have no ships for it. So I'm going to switch it over to Anchorage and I'll, I think I'll build a shipyard first. However, we're going to need cloth and wood for that. We already have wood. We don't have the tools for the logging camp, so we'd have to build tools first. But then we need iron mines for the tools. Or we also need wood for the tools, which are going to be used to chop down the wood. So I'm going to be using this strategy called ignoring the problem until it becomes too big for me to manage and just do this anyway. First of all, we should probably get a wheat farm because we want people to be able to eat before we can import things. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Speaking of tools, we're going to need that for basically everything. Let's get one of those. We're going to want some livestock ranches for cloth. Oh wait, we have cotton plantations. We can just do that. But livestock ranches also give you meat and they give you a pretty comparable amount of fabric. So I'm just going to go with livestock ranches. Plus they build quicker. Speaking of fabric, we appear to not have any. So we might want to prioritize that livestock ranch around here. They build super quickly, so I don't think it'll hinder our progress too much. And let's let the game run, and we are making a lot of money. Next, research. I'm actually not going to be building an army. That might come to bite me later, but I want to focus on other things at the moment. I might get an army later, but that's not something I'm thinking about right now. We can't really afford it. Well, we actually might be able to, but we need to sort out the laundry list of all our issues I just mentioned already. So let's start out with the cotton gin so we can work towards the lathe, and we can eventually work towards railways. So let's drop taxes, and let's also build a construction sector our first construction sector, and let's prioritize it. Our heir to the throne has been born, and he's zero years old, and he's already a, uh, this word. I'm not, not making any tools yet, so I'm gonna switch these over to, I guess they're just hopping these down with their hand, like you do in Minecraft. I have no idea how they're cutting down these logs, but uh, I, I guess you can do it with nothing. Already, our standard of living has shot up like a point, which is, I have no idea how that's happened, but hey, I'm not complaining. Now we should get started on some laws. Oh wait, there are no laws we can pass. That is because all the clout belongs to the landowners. Now we want to do workers' rights and stuff, because remember, we're trying to have a high standard of living. We're trying to make things uh, better for the people. So we're going to bolster the trade unions. But actually, you know, they generally don't gain too much traction until later on. So actually, that's kind of pointless for now. So let's instead bolster the intelligentsia and the rural folk and um, we can't suppress the landowners because they're in the government. However, we can bolster the devout. So we basically do the strategy of bolstering everyone else except for one, and it's basically the same thing as suppressing them. I don't know if that's at all accurate, but it makes sense in my head. So as many people will tell you, Albania is not exactly a spacious place. And we've only got about a million people to work with. So I'm thinking 
a strategy we that might work out is spamming textiles. Now this is basically what every nation in the industrial revolution did in real life. So we don't have coal and we do have iron, but we don't have any coal. So we, there's a lot of industrial stuff we can't do because we, we can't make steel without importing the coal and imports in this game, they just don't ever work out the way I like it. So I try to avoid it. However, we can build cotton plantations and we can build livestock ranches, which both give us fabric. So we have enough materials to at least make the first uh, level of clothing. We can go up to dye workshops, that would make it way more efficient. However, I'm not going to, I'm just gonna have a lot of these and that'll chew up more of the population. So hopefully through these three building types, we'll be able to suck up all the population. And when there is a demand for workers, so you have profitable businesses that aren't fully employed, but can, and there's not enough people, that will raise their standard of living because those businesses will start paying more because they have to compete. There's a little lesson in economics for you. Even though this is a video game, it's still, still a little realistic. Kind of. Speaking of fabric production, we have unlocked the cotton gin. That's actually extremely helpful. We are currently stockpiling gold, which from what I understand from playing this game, it really doesn't do anything if you stockpile gold. Somebody can explain that to me in the comments because I don't understand it at all. But this doesn't really seem like a problem. However, it does bother me a little bit because it's telling me that I shouldn't do it. So I'm going to build in our construction sector. So starting out with nothing as we are in Albania. Oh my God, minus 4K already. Okay, let's actually get rid of that construction sector and just um, deal with whatever this does. So what I was saying is starting out with nothing as you do in Albania in this game, doesn't sound great at first. However, since you start out with nothing, it means that you have to build everything yourself. So you can build the entire nation into whatever direction you want. So currently we are making too many clothes. However, clothes are one of those things that you kind of always need in this game and you never can really seem to produce enough of it. So we're going to try exporting it to everyone. Now when their demand for clothes goes up, so will our exports, hopefully, if it works right. Now we are starting to get a little bit low on bureaucracy. We don't have a single government administration building, so I'm going to build one of those since we do have a bit of money to play around with. Okay, so according to the tooltip, it looks like stockpiling gold causes inflation, which, as most people will tell you, not a great thing. So we're, we should do something about that. It's a movement to get rid of hereditary bureaucrats. That sounds awesome. Wow, all these options are awful. I think this is the least bad of them all, though. Go with that one. Now we're in the negative per bureaucracy. Of course we are. All right, it looks like we've mostly stabilized a good bit of the market. Um, apparently, a lot of people really want tea. Uh, they can just deal with it. Looks like we need wood and chairs. So we can do that easy enough. We have a tooling workshop, which means we can now produce more wood. We use the wood to build the tools that will cut down the wood. Once again, all of these are awful. I just realized we need paper for paper stuff. Let's make some. This one is going to give us a setback, but I'm going to go for it anyway. I've got nothing but awful events for every single... I love how they made the politics system in this game that was already awful even worse. Looks like we've gotten some of our basic needs taken care of, so I'm going to build an iron mine so we can have a more efficient construction sector. Because every time I build another one, my uh, income goes down a lot, so I'd rather just make this one, um, what's the word? More efficient. I give up. Alright, so this idiot wants to enact closed borders. Can I get rid of you? Um, yeah, looks like I can. Yeah, let's do that. Now, I go with professional army every single time, but I think in this one case where I'm not going to be building a big army, I think it's going to be good to go for national militia. Speaking of armies, it might be good to make some equipment for that army so that they're not going into battle punching the enemy. I'm going to subsidize our only trade center because that'll help with our exports, which we are building an export-based economy here. So, and I know how this sounds, it might be better to move away from mercantilism and towards free trade. That's best if you're going to be trading a lot. Dang. We are getting a petition from the landowners to pass local police force. We don't have a police force. I don't really like local police force because it gives landowners more strength, but it's better than nothing. So I guess we'll go with that. I'll just switch to a police force afterwards. I really can't afford to be taking minus 20 interest approval if it doesn't work. Local police force. Awesome. So this should give us legitimacy and 
a few loyalists, but they are powerful loyalists, so that's something, I guess. Economic systems. I usually like to go for laissez-faire because it allows me to construct more stuff without paying for it. However, I want to go for interventionism so I can poke the uh, economy around and make it do what I want. Ideally, we go for command economy, but that's super late game. I don't think we're going to get to that. And by that, I mean I think I'm going to lose interest in this game before we get to that. Cotton has become very expensive, and since I'm building everything off of that, having a, a lot of extra cotton, that's not good. So I am going to build some cotton plantations. We can get rid of serfdom. This one option isn't great, but that's still better than nothing. Some guy has showed up to support tenant farmers. Well, that's pretty awesome. He is not even a bad politician. Political shenanigans. That's, that's awesome. I have to go with this option. I might even grant you leadership if the rural folk ever manage to make their way into the government. We now have tenant farmers. Awesome. Ooh, and we have someone supporting national militia. I did want to pass that. And I can't. I have to wait 14 more weeks. I'm so happy that that's the thing. I'm going to have to wait to accumulate a whole lot of radicals before I can start passing the law that I want to pass anyway. I feel like I'm complaining too much in this video. I don't think you guys want to see someone complain for, I don't know, half an hour, 40 minutes, however long this is going to be. So instead of spending the, you know, 20 minutes or however long this video is going to be just complaining about how much I don't like the game, how about I ask you all a question? Recently, my brother-in-law asked me a question, and I've been thinking about it for a while. He asked me this question, like, probably two months ago, and it's, for a million dollars a year, oh, speaking of one million, we just reached one million GDP. But I was saying, for a million, one million USD a year, would you eat six hot dogs a day with the bun? Now think about that. That's two thousand seven hundred dollars a day, and you just have to eat six hot dogs. Now I'll be, I'll be honest. Six hot dogs is a lot of hot dogs. But maybe you could, you know, get super into like working out and stuff. You'll have to consume a lot more calories. And then, you know, it won't be as bad if you're eating six hot dogs a day. I think with the bun is probably the part that set me over. I think I would do it personally. I think the main problem I have with it is I just, I'd be too full. I wouldn't be able to eat six hot dogs in a day. But maybe if I'm working a lot, maybe if I start working out a lot more, I think it might be a lot easier. And, you know, if I'm making a million dollars a year, I don't really have to be working a job. I can spend more time, you know, working out, doing whatever. So I think it could possibly work out in the end. Plus, you know, there's also the health consequences, obviously, of eating six hot dogs a day. But maybe you can get super, um, like, super, super healthy hot dogs. I don't really know if they make those, but they probably do. But what do you think? What Would you do that? Let me know. Please massage the YouTube algorithm for me and tell me in the comments. Arms industries are almost done, so we have most of our things sorted out, it seems. Nothing's... Super expensive, except maybe grain. We'll build we'll build one more farm. Just one. Then we'll follow that up with cotton plantations, livestock ranches, and more textile mills. Now, if you're ever playing this game, all right, and you, for whatever reason unknown, you want to play this game by creating one item and exporting it everywhere like I'm trying to do right now. It's probably going to fail here pretty soon. I'm completely expecting that. But um, at least it'll be an interesting video. But if for whatever reason unimaginable you want to build an entire economy off of doing one thing and you know i actually did a video on that as albania and you can see in the top right corner so if you ever want to build an economy off of just exporting one item i would recommend doing tools because you need tools for basically everything and everyone seems to never have enough another thing no one ever has enough of is hardwood but that's pretty hard to get your hands on anyway so i wouldn't recommend that i can switch to iron frame building since i have an iron mine now however that's going to cost a lot more money so either i raise taxes and do this or i just wait a little bit longer i think i'm going to wait a little bit longer until i have the funds to do it however we are pretty far out of our gold reserves than we should be so i'll switch it over now and then i can just switch it over later when we run out of money and we have railways now that's awesome usually i go for water tube boiler next but that's kind of pointless so i'm just going to go for intensive agriculture so we can so we can make more food this option is kind of funny but i'm going to go with this one national militia awesome religious schools that sounds like a good idea to me look at that we've raised the standard of the living four points already look at that portion of loyalists that's almost a quarter that's pretty amazing now should i become a protectorate for the ottoman empire now that would make me part of their market which is would be absolutely fantastic because that gives me a large amount of people that i can sell my stuff to however i do kind of become a subject to them and i don't really want that however it does give us also a protector of sorts so people are going to be less likely to invade us and that's you know something i am worrying a little bit about 
because we are, you know, completely defenseless. Now, it's been a minute since I played this game, as you might, as you probably have noticed. So, I don't remember if being a protectorate makes me involved in their wars or not. I don't think so. That's not to say that the Ottoman Empire is a great ally. They have a large army, but it's mostly uh, garbage. Unless they've upgraded it by now. Um, they're, they're using line infantry and mobile artillery. Okay, so they're actually not that bad. Okay, so that's actually kind of worth... Okay, so it doesn't look like it. So... This looks like there are only upsides to this. However, I'm going for a bit of a challenge here, so I'm not going to do this the easy way, unfortunately. Now, I really want schools, all right? And this 20% enactment chance, that is absolutely amazing. But 20% lower strata becoming loyalist. That seems like an ultimate win to me, and my loyalists have basically just doubled. You always want to pick options like that if you're only working with one state. How is our king doing? He is unpopular. Why? Because he's imperious. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Oh, wait, no, that's actually amazing because, oh my gosh, that this is the best trade I've ever seen. The minus 35 popularity is a little bit painful because remember, the more popularity you have for your leader, that contributes to more or less authority. So this is making me lose 35 authority. But minus 25% decree cost, that basically fixes the authority problem because, you know, it's already making the decrees, which I'm using the authority for cheaper. And then minus 20% rackles from standard of living, and then plus 10% from it increases. That is an absolute win. And we have religious schools. Everything is going so amazingly right now. And we can enact racial segregation, and I know how that sounds. So 96% of the country is our main culture. And we do have the, um, ah oh crap, what is it called? The promote national values thing going. So, I actually don't think I'm going to go for that. Instead, I'm going to switch towards agrarianism. Because absolutely anything is better than traditionalism. Except maybe industry band. It's just going great so far. Intensive agriculture is done. That's pretty awesome. We can make more food. And honestly, there's nothing else here that I want to get. Except maybe reinforce concrete, but that's going to take 13 years, so I'm not going to go for that yet. Instead, I'm going to take a trip over here to the society tree. And we're going to work to on some of these, so we're going to start with currency standards. Wonderful. Greece wants a defensive pact. Do I want a defensive pact? Um... Huh. I don't know. They've got 13 battalions, not very many. They've got five flotillas. Not very many either, so their military isn't very strong. If I know my history, they're probably going to have problems with the Ottoman Empire. However, it looks like they're improving relations with them. Relations between Greece and the Ottoman Empire are amicable. And if, you know, someone declares war on them, I can just say no, right? I'm not going to risk it, though. I'm not going to go for that. Um, thanks, anyway. And Pete, please keep buying my clothes. You're my main source of revenue. Let's start exporting more clothes. It's going to be profitable to export them to the French and the Italian. Egyptians. I'm going to go for the Egyptians because they're less likely to actually build some themselves. Ooh, that is awful. Let's encourage exports on all of these. Oh, it's automatic for all of them. That's new. Now I'll make less money on tariffs, but it'll be more profitable to export these clothes to people. So therefore we can export more and that's what we want. We want to export more of the stuff. We are currently having taxation capacity issues. We're missing out on 10% of our tax revenue. So I'm going to switch over to filing cabinets. It's a good thing we built that paper mill earlier. That should fix the issue, but it's not. Well, that's really awful. Um, government administration buildings are very expensive, so I'm hesitant to build another one. This one is costing me almost a thousand a day or a week, and I've only got 50 bucks to play around with. However, let's break out the calculator and spreadsheet. So according to the math I did, if we do get complete taxation you know, get all the taxes straight, we're going to be making 6% more in income taxes and poll taxes, which is going to equate to, at this single moment, $113.76, or pounds in this case. Now, it costs almost 1000 to build one of those buildings, so it's really not going to be worth it. So the best way to raise our standard of living is to get more peasants into other buildings, because peasants have a very low standard of living, and you can't really do anything to fix that. So we just need to start constructing more stuff, and that's just going to take a while. So I'm going to be cutting out a lot of this video because I want it to be shorter, and it's already getting pretty long. Our situation with the standard of living 
it's okay. It's about where you start off with in most major countries. However, if you look at the map, it's pretty decent compared to everywhere around us, which is something. And we have four whole textile mills now. Now, the cheaper we make these, the more of it we're going to be able to export. Because if it's cheaper here than it is in the place I'm exporting it to, it'll be able to export more because, you know, people are going to want to buy cheaper stuff. Another lesson in economics. I'm going to stop building textile mills for just a second, though. I'm going to build one furniture manufacturing, and I've built another logging camp. We can only build one more logging camp after this, so we're going to have to be very sparing on what we use our wood for. Ha. Did you hear that? I said we have to be sparing on what we use our wood for. That's funny, right? Unequal treaties. So apparently Great Britain has wiggled their way into our politics and have a bunch of stuff that they want us to sign. So we can say no and get minus 10% enactment chance. That's not great because we're already at 3%. We can just say no and not make a big uh, deal about it. Get a setback. Less relations with Great Britain, which is really bad. I really want to have good relations with them because they can very easily invade me and... They made the AI a lot more aggressive as of lately, so I really don't want to do that. Or I can just sign the treaty and I will owe them an obligation. Now, that sounds bad at first. But what are they going to do with that obligation? I don't have an army that they... So, calling the, me into a war would be completely pointless. I really don't know. However, we're at 3%, so I'm just going to say no. And I'm going to give up. Dedicated police force. Look at that. Austria is... Swang they dick around in the Ottoman Empire's face. I'm very glad I did not become their subject. It's actually really good because they have a whole bunch... I've played as the Ottoman Empire before, and they have a whole bunch of industry in the Balkans. So if Austria comes in and destroys all that, they'll have to be more reliant on my exports to them. This is called war profiteering, and it is very, very profitable, as the name implies. Homesteading. I would like to get that. There's now movement for it. I'll get that after dedicated police force. We almost have religion, autocracy, nationality. That's actually pretty great. We just gotta make sure this dot guy is still alive in 15-ish years. If I remember right, that event that it gives us gives us a whole bunch of loyalists, which is always great. The capitalists are building an art academy. That is amazing. If you want to see more art academies get built in Albania? Well, check out this video in the top right corner. And while you're busy checking that out, you know, I'll play an ad in the background. Aha. Yay, chairs. You know, it might be a good idea to build some food factories, you know. Maybe people should stop eating nothing but bread all day. That might be a good idea. Let's make the animals poop. And then let's put the poop on the food. There. Now we're making a little trickle more. Now we're making more grain. I'm going to switch this over to citrus orchard. So now we are making fruit, which is pretty decent. You know, diversify your your intake of food a little bit. Oh, take okay, please for us. That's awesome. But more importantly, this is going to give us sugar, which we can use to do other stuff with, such as use sweeteners in our food industries to make it more efficient. Just like that. Interventionism is endorsed by everyone, including the landowners, apparently. Oh, that's amazing. I'm happy about something. Finally. Ottoman Empire wants us to become their protectorate. You know, I've already... already thought about this. No. You see, we could be upgrading our textile mills right now. Maybe we colonize something somewhere and start getting dyes, you know, make us a lot more efficient. However, I don't want to do that. I want to employ as many people as humanly possible. Because remember, we have to create competition in order to raise our standard of living through the roof. And in this game, having competition and having unemployed people are mutually exclusive. You want to know what would be a really cool addition to Victoria? If you could have companies, or if you could rename certain buildings. Like, I want to name this to, like... You know, the Commander Cream Corporation. But I can't. I think that would be kind of neat. You know what, just for giggles, let's build one barrack. Oh, another one of these events. Ooh, you're spoiling me. Look at this chart now. I've never seen it so beautiful before. Never seen it so alluring. I've never seen it so radiant. You know, I spent all this time building this textile mill, trying to focus on it as much as possible. And they're paying 23 bucks in taxes. Interventionism. Wonderful. Now it's time for fun. Let's get nationalism. Also, we're making a little bit more money now. Let's switch to iron frame buildings. Also, the food industry appears to be doing pretty well. Good. So the landowners are currently at plus 20. So that means if I can get the intelligentsia and the government, which I'm going to do. All right, their loyalty still doesn't drop. 
That means I should be able to ban slavery without causing a rebellion. And it looks like the leader of the landowners doesn't care. All right, that this could not be going better right now. And now I say that it's all going to go wrong, isn't it? Look at this. Every single interest group is currently loyal. That's a... I've never seen this before. Even the trade unions. So currently the textile mill situation is going pretty well. However, they just take so long to build. I'm going to start prior to our prioritizing some other stuff so i can get more people out of the subsistence farms and hopefully i can get this to 12 standard of living slavery ban yippee that's definitely a key step in creating a utopia i think women's rights might also be important let's work on that so if we look at the map right now the standard of living around us it's not great but compared to everywhere around us we're not doing all that bad. I've currently, I'm still in the introduction phase for, you know, giving women just a few rights, not even that many. And there's been 12 stalls so far. 12. This is why I don't play this game that much anymore. Religion, autocracy, and nationality has been completed. So this is the event. This is completely useless because this guy is getting pretty old. He's going to die soon. Um, this is pretty awesome. 5% of all of the people in Albania become loyalists. Or the Albanians in Albania, but there's mostly Albanians. And then 60% of Sunni clergymen. Wow, that's a lot. However, there really aren't that many clergymen. So I'm going to get out the, the calculator again see which one is uh, which one I should do. I believe this is going to be the best option. See how many loyalists that gives us quite a few. Now, usually in this game, I would have, you know, gone through like 12 wars or so, so far, puppeting nations no one's heard about. However, I haven't done that in this game. And as a result, I have a lot less dead people. So I'm actually, it, it, I'm having a little bit of difficulty actually finding jobs for all the peasants at the moment because... It's just, there's so many of them, and it takes so long to build anything, because I have, like, no construction at all, because I've got no money to pay for it. It appears that we are currently being ruled by Santa Claus. Well, he certainly looks like him. He certainly looks like Santa Claus. However, I don't think Santa Claus would be considered a jingoist. Okay, we've reached a 0% success chance after... Let's see how many setbacks have happened. 14! 14 setbacks, and those are just the ones I had events. Yes. All right, this is taking so incredibly long. I'm just going to build another construction sector and just take the debt, I think. All right, so I've got an idea. Instead of spending my money producing and building things, I'm going to stop building stuff and use all my construction sectors to build stuff with other people's money. That way, I don't have to spend money. And the same amount of stuff is still getting constructed. In fact, I'm going to build two more construction sectors just specifically for this. I'm going to resume, let these two construct, and then I'm going to go back to just doing private construction. So I knew this would happen at one point. I had to build railways, and for that I need engines and coal, and I can't build either because I don't have any coal. So in true Albanian fashion, I'm going to take it out of someone else's pocket, in this case, the Austrian market. You can see everywhere in Eastern Europe for literacy, it's just this dark void of illiteracy. And then there's Albania just sitting right here, right in the middle of it. It's like a big hole in the map. All right, we have almost run out of people. This is actually great. One time when running out of workers in this game is actually the, uh, the goal. Yeah, so actually, you know, not constructing anything myself and spending other people's money, just like Albania in the early 2000s, uh, this is actually a lot more effective than I was expecting at first. Who would have known, you know, laissez-faire is actually really effective for building economies. All right, so we have just about run out of people. So I'm going to delete uh, all but one of these construction sectors, and I'm going to resume government construction. So now I can ease it towards where I want and actually, you know, make better decisions than the AI. And as I said earlier, once you run out of population, you're... Their living does start to grow. If you do it right, that is. It can very easily go completely wrong. Austria wants a trade agreement. That's actually really amazing. Because if I remember right, let's just check real quick. They are one of my, yeah, they are my largest, largest purchaser of clothes. So yes, thank you very much. Okay, as soon as I started doing government construction again, I gained about 30,000 people. Just kind of uh, spawned in out of nowhere. So let's... 
Actually, we have the funds now. We can build in our construction sector. Let's do that. That's going to... Putting one more construction sector. That will double our entire construction. Ooh, this is beautiful. Amazing. Okay, so it's 1875, and I still haven't reached the number one standard of living. I'm actually uh, number 44 worldwide, so that's... um. Not as great as I was hoping to be at this point, but I'm a I'm gonna keep going a little bit longer. But I I'm, I'm kind of running out of steam. I've been sitting here just kind of waiting for stuff to construct for the last about 45 minutes, just kind of playing on my phone, interacting with events every once in a while. So yeah, I don't want to keep doing that. I don't think that's a very interesting video. So I think we'll go until like 1885, and we'll see where we are then. Okay, so. The investment pool has construction, and it's got a lot of money in it. It just has no private construction to invest in. What? I've n never seen that happen before. What the heck? Oh, there it goes. Okay. Never mind. Okay, so it's not 1885 yet, but I'll be real with y'all. It's late. I'm tired, and I don't want to do this anymore, and I've essentially given up. I don't think we're going to be able to make it to number one standard of living. I just don't think it's possible as Albania. Because all the other all the other countries, they just have so much more resources to work with. I just don't think it's going to work out. However, we do did manage to do a few things that were pretty cool. Such as, look at this chart with how many loyalists there are compared to radicals. I think that's pretty neat. And also, we're being ruled by Santa Claus. That's it. Bye.